Hey everyone, COE33 here. Happy New Year's. It's 2016 and we're doing our first annual Game Rooms tour. I'm going to take you around both Game Rooms and share with you everything that we've accumulated over the years. This will be a long form video where I take my time and uh, show you all the different items in the collection. I hope you enjoy this video. This is not a bragging video or a look at what I got type video. It is truly in the spirit of sharing. I know a lot of our subscribers are game collectors themselves and we think that you would enjoy seeing what we have in the collection. Leaf and I have a lot of fun in our game rooms. We like decorating and organizing and building things and starting projects and playing games. So it's just kind of a fun thing that we like doing together and look forward to sharing it with you. So right now we're in the downstairs game room. This is technically my office, but we've accumulated so much stuff that we went ahead and turned it into a second game room. This is where we film the majority of our videos and you see the backdrop here that uh, you see in most of our videos. So I think we'll start down here. Leaf is upstairs playing a little NES and we'll meet up with her in a little bit. But why don't we go ahead and start over here with the Wii Collection. Currently we have just over 200 games in the Wii Collection. This is the only console that Leaf and I are going for a complete set of. There are well over a thousand games in the North American Wii set lots of which is shovelware, so we have a long ways to go until we complete our set, but it is a fun collecting goal to strive towards, and uh, we just enjoy playing the Wii and collecting for the system. So, right here we have some of the more collectible titles, including Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, that's something that we picked up recently at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, Pandora's Tower, the Last Story and Xenoblade Chronicles, those three games are the Operation Rainfall games. And then we have Monster Hunter Tri. We have both the Zelda games, The Legend of, uh, or excuse me, The Twilight Princess and uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Super Mario All-Stars, a Blue Nunchuck, and New Super Mario Brothers Wii along with this little promotional item that I picked up online. I thought that was pretty cool. And then moving over to the side here, we have more Mario games, including Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy 2. We have Super Paper Mario, Mario Kart Wii, and Mario Party 8, along with the Epic Mickey paintbrush. Moving down, we have more games, including the two most recent pickups to the collection, which are Walk It Out and Rodea the Sky Soldier. And then over here, we have the Kirby Dream Collection, still sealed. More games. Some uh, Wii Wheels, Metroid Prime Trilogy, which is a game that we just got from a, doing a trade with Retro J. It was really nice of him to send that our way. More games down here, and then we got the Wii Fit board, and a RC track, a Mario Kart RC track, which is a lot of fun to play on. This is the console that I picked up uh, when the Wii launched, and it's still going strong. We have it hooked up via component cable to our Sony Trinitron television, so it looks and sounds and plays great on that thing. Uh, it's definitely an ideal setup for playing the Wii. And then we got some more games and some Wiimotes here. Moving up top, we have some boxed accessories and the console box right there. A Connects Mario Kart toy. We got Red Steel 2, a Star Wars lightsaber is actually another one. There's the Anakin lightsaber, and then there's a, I think it's a Darth Vader lightsaber behind that. A couple games, and uh, just some more random accessories. So that is our Wii collection. Moving up here, we have some Transformer action figures. A Super Smash Bros. GameCube controller, a Wii U Mario Kart 8 wheel. A very cool item, the N-Level Amiibo display. Picked this up at GameStop not too long ago. A Skylanders Wii U set. Some World of Warcraft action figures. Definitely a big fan of World of Warcraft. Um, I played that for quite a while. Uh, I stopped playing it a few years back, but I definitely put plenty of hours into that game. Skylanders sets that we picked up at Goodwill. Moving down here. Let me turn this light on for you so you can see. Let's get that to focus. We got some more Amiibo and some Skylanders. Down here we have Super Mario Maker, which I got for Christmas, which is very fun. I'm enjoying that immensely. 
uh, having a lot of fun making levels and playing other people's levels. The Retro Mario Amiibo. Some more Skylanders. Our Wii U box. And then the few Wii U games that we have are back here. We've got Disney Infinity, Watch Dogs, DuckTales Remastered, and the NES Remix Pack. I usually wait until uh, games get a little bit cheaper before I start collecting heavily for a system. So eventually we'll start collecting for the Wii U, but for now we're just picking up games that we get cheap for the most part. And then we've got uh, NES and then uh, Princess Peach back there. The box for that uh, Amiibo display. The DJ turntables for uh, the Wii, uh, for DJ Hero. That's a really fun game. And then the Sony receiver and uh, Sony DVD player slash CD player. And uh, that's hooked up to 5.1 channel surround sound. So all the consoles running to this TV uh, run through that receiver and the surround sound and sound really good. Our small GameCube collection, we got Donkey Kong Jungle Beats with the bongos. And then we got a few games, uh, Super Mario Sunshine, which we got recently from Water Music Retro's 100th, uh, con a 100th subscriber contest. And then Super Monkey Ball SSX3, uh, we got Wave Race, Blue Storm, another one that we got from Water Music Retro, uh, Toadstool Tour, Mario Golf, Harry Potter, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Scooby-Doo, and a preview disc. And then down here we have our consoles, or some of our consoles, I should say. An original Model 1 Sega Genesis, definitely one of my favorite systems of all time. And then Nintendo 64, GameCube, with the GameCube or with the Game Boy Player on the bottom. An original Xbox that I picked up at a garage sale that was modded. So it's got a bunch of Super Nintendo games on there and a bunch of Nintendo games, which is pretty cool. And then a original PlayStation. And of course the Trinitron, and then we got this Wii sign that's from an old Blockbuster video. And up here is our Atari collection. We got some Atari games. A uh, paddle controller, a four-switch console. Back there is an Atari 2600 Junior. A very cool item, the Portland Retro Gaming Expo 10th Anniversary Atari 2600 cart. Our badge from the Expo. Another paddle and some more games. Moving over here, we've got our original Xbox games, or some of them. This is not all of them. I'm not going to read them all off, but some of the better titles here are Morrowind, Silent Hill 2, Fable, Knights of the Old Republic. Over here is a very cool item. This is a Dobsonian telescope. I enjoy uh, astronomy, and we live out in the country, and we don't have much light pollution where I live, so I like to take this out into our back deck and look at the stars and galaxies, and it's really incredible what you can see with this telescope. Back here we have a few miscellaneous items, the box for our RC car track, uh, and then comic book collection, and the Tony Hawk Shred skateboard. I know the lighting is kind of bad, it's hard to see. Coming over here, we've got Final Fantasy stuff and a Verismo VR headset. And then into one of my favorite display cabinets. This is where we keep some of my personal favorite items. So, the start up top here, this is our Final Fantasy collection. Definitely one of my favorite series to play. I think Final Fantasy IX is probably my favorite. And then down here is something a lot of you have been asking to see. Here's our Tomb Raider Shrine. So we've got all the original PlayStation Tomb Raiders. The Tomb Raider Collector's Edition for the Xbox 360. That's the reboot with a very cool statue. The different Tomb Raider games for the PS2, Laura Croft and the Temple of Osiris, Gold Edition, and it came with this little bobblehead. Very cool art print that came with this uh, Collector's Edition. A very cool kind of action figure, it's Laura Croft versus the Yeti. She's got a little shotgun there and she's repelling, and the Yeti's trying to get her. 
And then back here we got Tomb Raider Underworld, and then Tomb Raider Cradle of Life on DVD, which you can kind of see back there, along with uh, Tomb Raider Legend on the DS. So that is our Tomb Raider collection. Definitely one of my favorite series of all time. I remember when the very first Tomb Raider came out, and that was just a really memorable experience for me. That was the first uh, adventure type, almost like Indiana Jones style game that really kind of immersed me into a 3D world where I felt like I was uh, Indiana Jones exploring these caves and there was traps and treasure and just a, a really cool experience to have when that, first, when that game first came out. And down here, another one of my favorite series of all time, this is the Fallout Collection. So we've got, of course, the Pip-Boy Edition. And we got Fallout 3 for the PC. Uh, we've got the Locksmith Vault Tech Bobblehead. Some Nuka Cola Caps. Fallout 3 on the Xbox 360. A little uh, kind of mechanical roach. Kind of like a rad roach. It's not actually a Fallout rad roach, but it looks kind of like one, so I put it in there. Fallout 3 on the PS3. The Fallout Anthology, which is a very cool item. Fallout New Vegas, I waited in line at launch day at midnight, and I got that, and then it came with these playing cards because I got it on launch day. And that is our Fallout collection. Moving down here, we have some more Amiibo. We've got the Retro 3-pack with uh, Rob the Robot, Mr. Game and & Watch, and uh, the Duck Hunt Dog and Duck. And then another item from the Final Fantasy collection, Final Fantasy 13 2 Collector's Edition. Moving over to my desk area. This is where Leaf and I film the majority of our videos. It's also where I do the majority of my work. I do work from home. I have several jobs that I do from the house. And uh, this area isn't really dedicated to gaming. I try to keep it kind of relatively open comparative to the rest of the room just to uh, help me think clearly as I spend a lot of time here on this computer. Um, eventually I'm going to totally redo this area. I'm going to get a new desk. I'm going to build another computer. I'm going to probably do like a three monitor setup. And this is going to get changed over time. But uh, for now this is how it is and it's not too shabby at the moment. I've got my Pink Floyd screensaver. I'm a huge Pink Floyd fan. I have been since I was a teenager. Definitely my favorite band. Some of my Pink Floyd CDs. Uh, this white Squire Stratocaster. This is uh, the guitar that I learned on. It's not my day-to-day -day player. It's just the one that uh, I got my start on. I have a American Stratocaster over here in its case in the corner. I don't play as much as I should anymore, but uh, I do enjoy breaking out the guitar every once in a while and playing. Just kind of a side hobby for me. And uh, just, you know, some office stuff. Nothing too exciting. You know, keyboard, mouse, some shipping materials, and... Uh, yeah, it's just kind of my office setup here. So moving over here, we've got uh, some Star Wars collectibles. Stormtrooper helmet. We got a uh, few Star Wars plug and plays, Star Wars comic books, pop vinyl figures, all that good stuff. Still haven't seen the new movie, but looking forward to it. Leaf and I are going to go do that here soon. In this display cabinet, we have our Indie Box collection. We both really enjoy this service. Uh, out of all the subscription services that we signed up for, this is by far our favorite. Every month we look forward to getting a new indie box and uh, just a really great deal or value for the money. So I look forward to watching this collection grow. Down here we have our Mario Brothers NES, which a lot of you guys watched us build. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a little link in the top right corner right now. Our Game On Expo Retro Championship cart signed by Gamester81. Down here we've got our Halo Xbox and our Halo games, along with the Halo 5 Limited Xbox One controller box. Down here we've got some random action figures. Moving over here we have some Xbox 360 games, including the Gears of War collector set, Gears of War 2 collector set, Infinite Undiscovery, Chronicles of Riddick, Dante's Inferno. Got a gaming chair here. This is the chair that Leaf sits in when we're filming rapid fire pickups or on the hunt and she's doing the gameplay in the background. 
that's what she sits on and you can actually plug this into the TV and it has speakers in it so that's kind of cool a very cool PlayStation 1 fight stick got that at a goodwill for five bucks and it works wonderful really enjoy that thing down here we have our PS2 hooked up to this TV this was a uh, good find at a garage sale. This was ten dollars and it works great and it has lots of uh, inputs so you can put component, uh, you can put composite, VGA, HDMI so it's always nice. A lot of the modern TVs don't have a lot of inputs so I like these uh, slightly older TVs that have uh, more options for hooking up consoles. Unfortunately it's 1080i and not 1080p so that's kind of a bummer. I might replace it eventually if I can find a 1080p TV that has uh, all the hookups and VGA because eventually I'll probably get a second Dreamcast and move it down here and hook it up via VGA to this uh, TV. We have our Atari Flashback. It's just easier to play Atari games on this than it is to break out the old Atari and set that up. So this is typically how I play Atari games when I feel like doing that or Leaf wants to play a little Pong or something like that. Over here we have our Resident Evil themed storage locker. We built this, Leaf and I. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the corner right now. This was a very fun project. And in here we have our Resident Evil collection. And I'll turn the slide on for you. So we got our Umbrella PlayStation 1. We've got a very cool controller that Retro Remix Nation sent to us. He sent us a mystery box that had all kinds of amazing stuff in it. Um, definitely check out that video. I'll link to it as well. Uh, Resident Evil is one of those games, one of those series that I have a lot of love for. I remember when the first game came out, uh, I ran to the store and I picked up that long box, the Resident Evil long box, when it first came out. Uh, I think it was on the day that it came out. And I just fell in love with the series. And to this day, I love playing them. I've played them all. Um, I believe I've played them all. There may be one or two that I've missed. The only one that I've ever played that I haven't gotten into and I haven't enjoyed is Resident Evil 6. I could not get into that. It just did not feel like a Resident Evil game to me. It was really disappointing, and I didn't even finish it. So hopefully they stray away from that path and go back to their roots a little bit because I much prefer classic-style Resident Evil games. So that is our Resident Evil collection. Moving on, we have our PlayStation 1 collection here. Some long box PlayStation games. We got uh, the Twisted Metal games. Love those games. Had a lot of fun playing those growing up. Tony Hawk and Cool Border games. I used to skateboard and snowboard when I was younger. Not so much anymore, but I used to have a lot of fun. And my friends and I would go skateboarding or snowboarding all day and then go back to uh, my apartment and play uh, Tony Hawk or Cool Borders and had a lot of fun. Lots of good memories with those games. Star Wars games, Beyond the Beyond, and uh, just a bunch of great PS1 games. Very fun system to collect for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here we have a pretty cool print that I got in a loot crate. It is a kind of a blown up image of an Atari 2600 cart. And there's like a Pac-Man maze in the middle there, so a pretty cool little art print. Over here we have a Dark Souls 2 Collector's Edition. Got that at GameStop for $25, so that's a good deal. Down here is my light box. This is uh, where I photograph my artwork. I've been a glass blower since I was a teenager, so well over 15 years. And uh, this is a silver-fumed skull orb with a dragon's blood air trap implosion underneath it. So I photograph my work and then I ship it off to stores, galleries, and customers. And uh, then I store all my glass down here before it gets shipped off to where it goes. Up here we have some Xbox games. Some pretty good titles there. Shenmue 2, Digimon Rumble Arena 2, Morrowind, Babel, Siberia 2. Dead or Alive 3, Gladius, The Punisher. Our Xbox 360 tower, we've got the Xbox One Halo 5 limited controller. I love that thing. I actually use that to play uh, games on the PC. 
And uh, boy, that's a good controller. That is my favorite controller now. I used to use the wired Xbox 360 controller for playing uh, PC games. I've got my gaming PC hooked up in the living room to uh, my large television, along with the modern consoles like uh, the Wii U, the PlayStation 3. And uh, for certain games that uh, don't require like a mouse and a keyboard, if it's not like a real-time strategy game or something like that, or MMO, I'll use a wired, or I used to use a wired Xbox 360 controller, but now I use this, and they, Microsoft got me to upgrade to Windows 10, which I really didn't want to do. But this only, if you want to do this wirelessly, or use this controller wirelessly, you have to upgrade to Windows 10. So that was really annoying. But Windows 10 isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, so it worked out in the end, and I didn't have any compatibility issues with any of my software or games or anything like that. So it worked out. Some Xbox 360 games. Alan Wake, still trying to get through that one, really liking it, just uh, I got sidetracked by something else, I'm not sure what it was, oh actually no I do, it was Fallout 4, The Evil Within, I beat that, that was a lot of fun, Mass Effect 2, another good game, Oblivion, played that on PC, love the Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, I've beaten all those, Dishonored, that was a good game, and then our Star Wars Xbox 360, very cool item. We have some loose PlayStation and PlayStation 2 games in this binder. And then moving over here, we've got some Xbox 360 games. Metro Last Light, Splatterhouse, Bioshock Infinite, love that game. Need for Speed Most Wanted, that's a recent pickup. Stick of Truth. Beautiful Katamari. Project Silphied. And uh, Golden Axe Beast Rider. I just played that recently. I wasn't too impressed with it. I love the original Golden Axe games on the Genesis, but that wasn't that great. Some original Xbox games. And then behind here, you can't really see it, but we have uh, cables and controllers and plug and plays and just kind of miscellaneous gaming stuff. This is my uh, amp for my guitar. So on the occasion that I feel like playing guitar, I take this stuff off the top of the amp, and then plug my guitar in, or guitar into that, and then I've got my uh, foot pedal down here. Some gaming magazines, and some cool action figures, and game gear that I kind of have sitting here to remind me that I need to fix it, I need to do the capacitor fix on it, but I've been procrastinating and I just haven't felt like doing it, so I'm sure eventually I'll get around to it. And then a centipede poster. So that is our downstairs game room, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And I think what we're going to do now is go meet up with Leaf upstairs. She's playing some NES, as I said. And uh, we'll go see what she's up to. And uh, we'll go take a tour of the upstairs game room. So I'll see you then. All right, guys. We're headed upstairs. Leaf is over here playing some Super Mario Brothers on the NES. Hey, guys. You having fun? Hey, yeah, I love this game. Cool. So this is where we have our Retron 3 hooked up to this old school television. Uh, this is definitely my favorite spot and least favorite spot to play NES games. It's just a cool retro vibe up here and a little TV is very reminiscent of how we used to play these games back in the 80s, huh? Yeah. We're old farts, so we remember that, don't we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love Mario. It's such a cool game. Yeah, definitely up there of all-time favorite games for both of us. Uh, this is actually the first video game I ever played. I remember seeing the commercials for Super Mario Brothers and the NES when I was a young kid, and I saved up coins for a year, and uh, on my birthday, I went to the store, cashed in all my coins, and I was a little bit short, but my dad went ahead and uh, gave me the extra that I needed to buy the NES console and he even got me a couple games and I've been hooked ever since on video games and it's just been a real passion that I've carried with me all these years. So up here on top of the TV we have a lava lamp, kind of a cool lighting fixture here. This is our Sega arcade cabinet. Uh, Leaf and I built this together. If you want to see that in action go ahead and check out our Sega Genesis collection video. I'll link to that in the top right corner right now. Very cool Earthworm Jim art print that we got at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Uh, just kind of a art print there. It's not really gaming related, but I just like it. 
storage ottoman that we have some controllers in. Moving over here, we have our slot machine. That thing is crazy. It's from Japan and it's incredibly loud, even on the lowest setting. It's literally ear-piercing loud and there's this crazy Japanese guy on it screaming at the top of his lungs and it's just the most bizarre slot machine ever, but it's kind of fun, I guess. Down here we've got some kind of arcade machine candies and then hiding behind there is our LED projector. We've got the Retron 3 hooked up to that as well and we have a projector screen so if we want to play some old school games on a large projector screen we can. Up top here we have a RC helicopter that I can control with my smartphone. Slot machine payout table. This is kind of a cool old advertisement. We have a uh, pinball machine that you'll see in a second but this is a advertisement of that pinball machine. It was sold through Sears in the late 70s and uh, I printed that out because I thought it was kind of cool. Our gaming chair. Coming over here to our entertainment center. We've got a lot of consoles hooked up here. So let's start down at the bottom. We have a VCR and some of our old VHS tapes. Sega Dreamcast. That's the same Sega Dreamcast I bought on 9999 launch day. It's still going strong. Another GameCube. Another Xbox. A Model 2 Sega Genesis that you can kind of barely see there. A Super Nintendo. An original toaster NES. We've got our sound bar and our television here. And uh, Leaf and I made this little Mario Brothers marquee. We took some DVD cases, printed out inserts, glued it all together, and put it on the TV there to kind of fill that empty space. Just kind of a fun little project that we worked on. Up here is our box Sega Genesis and our arcade stick. We've got some red LED lights up there. Coming over here, we've got kind of a fun little cubby. We've got our clock there, our neon clock, a little classic arcade sign, our iCade, and then right here is our level up, or power up, I should say, light switch. So you turn that on, it's got sound effects, and you can turn on the light with that, and we have a blue light in there. So it's a pretty cool item. Got some jelly bellies. We're all fans of jelly bellies in this house our pinball machine. Now this is a very cool little item that uh, we went down to Portland and rescued this from the rain. It was sitting outside. It was all graffitied. It did not work. It was in terrible condition and uh, Leaf and I did a restore on it. So we removed all the graffiti. There was super glue all over this glass right here. We got that off. All the rubber components inside were shot, so we had to replace all those. Um, I had to do some soldering on the board to get the sound to work. And uh, we did a bunch of repair work on the back glass because there was uh, a lot of crazing. So we filled in some of those empty spots and then we uh, triple thicked the back glass to protect it from future crazing. And uh, just a real fun project, and everyone, the family, enjoys playing this pinball machine. And when we have friends over, this is definitely the star of the game room. Everyone likes coming up here and playing some old school 70s pinball. There's our projector screen that I was talking about a second ago. And down here we've got our record collection. Got the Shenmue record in the corner, the Rocky Three soundtrack, and just a whole bunch of other records. Definitely my favorite way to listen to music. Coming over here, we've got uh, another candy machine. And we got our sarcophagi. Our record player, it also has a CD player and tape player. Our little catapult there. Some more records down below. That's some Albert King. I'm a big fan of the blues. It's uh, my favorite genre of music. And uh, I like collecting blues records, and Albert King is one of my favorites, especially that record. That's a great record. And then over here, we've got another candy machine. Everyone in this house loves candy, so <laughs> we've got lots of candy machines. And then we got our handhelds. So we got the Vita, we've got the PSP, we've got a DS, a Game Boy Advance, another DS back there. Leaf's got a couple handhelds in her room. We've got uh, Super Mario Brothers Limited Edition 3DS 
and a neon green Game Boy Color, and the boxes for our tablet computers. And then over here we've got our popcorn machine. It's fun to come up here and make some popcorn and watch a movie or TV or play some games. We've got an art print there. And over here, this is kind of my favorite spot in the house because we have a really nice view. I love sitting up here and looking at the deer and the squirrel and it's just uh, kind of a nice spot. We did have snow a couple days ago, so it's a shame that it all melted away because it was really pretty back here. Down here is our PlayStation 2 collection. We did a whole collection video of this if you want to see this in detail. Definitely one of our favorite systems to collect for. And then we also have PSP, some of the UMD videos, the Vita, and uh, a little PlayStation 2 network adapter right there. Behind the curtain, we've got the Game Boy case with a bunch of Game Boy games in it and a classic brick Game Boy. And then over here is the wall of video games. So we have our Nintendo shelf with all our NES carts, our Super Nintendo, our Nintendo 64, um, DS, 3DS, Leafs playing Super Mario Brothers right now, which is that empty spot. But we got Castlevanias and Marios and Adventure Islands and Goonies and Contra and all the classics. Still lots of games that we want to get for the NES, but we kind of wait until we come across them in the wild for a good price because NES is just so expensive these days. And then we have these little signs that we put on top of all the shelves. So we got the Sega shelf, the PlayStation shelf, the PC shelf over there, and this is the Nintendo shelf. Moving over to the Sega shelf, we got our box Sega Genesis, our loose Sega Genesis. Game Gear case down there, some Game Gear games, our one Sega CD game. Some of my favorite games on this system, on the Sega Genesis, would be Earthworm Jim, and uh, definitely the Sonic games. Shinobi, Streets of Rage, Golden Axe. Moving over here, we've got the PlayStation 3 games. Love the Uncharted series. It's probably the main reason I bought a PlayStation 3 is to play those and The Last of Us. Uh, Naughty Dog just makes incredible games. I can't wait for Uncharted 4. That's probably the only reason I'm going to buy a PlayStation 4. I don't have one yet, and I will probably buy one just to play that. More PlayStation 3 games. We're seeing these a lot in the wild right now for cheap. I did not pay much for any of these. We got the Tekken Hybrid Limited Edition and then the Book of Spells. And then over here is our PC shelf. So we're actually running out of room for this. I'm probably going to end up building some shelves up here in this empty spot of the wall to expand our PC collection because we're out of room. So definitely enjoy collecting for the PC. Back in the day, I had an old Apple computer and I also had an IBM, and I used to play PC games growing up and I still enjoy playing them. So that's the PC collection. And then our Sega Dreamcast games. As a teenager, I threw out all the manuals and cases for these so I went ahead and put this little display together on the wall as a nice way to uh, showcase them. My favorite system of all time, the Dreamcast. So we got this little sign here up top and then we got all the games, Shenmue, Grandia, Skies of Arcadia, Resident Evil 2 and 3, Dino Crisis, Code Veronica, Hydro Thunder, it's a great game fun arcade boat racer, Soul Calibur, all that good stuff. And then we've got some kind of Egyptian prints here. A dartboard, which I'm a little hesitant to play because it's right next to the NES shelf. So it's not really the best spot for that. I may move it at some point. So that is the upstairs game room. We have a lot of fun up here. We uh, play board games as a family. Um, there's our board game collection right there. 
And uh, we have friends over pretty frequently and we'll play board games or we'll play on the iCade or on the Sega Genesis cabinet, uh, the slot machine or the pinball machine and everyone just has a good time. So it's just a really cool kind of communal space where people can come together and enjoy it and uh, hang out and just enjoy life. So that is our 2016 Game Rooms Tour, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun to put together for you. It'll be interesting to see next year how things progress. As I said, we're always tinkering. We're always building stuff. So I'm sure things will change, and I'm sure the collection will grow. And uh, who knows what it'll look like next year. So until the next video, guys, take care, and bye.